We got a bunch of them. My name's Todd, by the way. Hi, I'm Bob. Hey, Bob. Nice good to meet you. Me. Hey, good to meet you too. What's up with you guys? Uh, well, the, um, this kind of explains, that's more of the longer version, but basically in Texas, the number one cause of death is mm -hmm. abortion. Oh, yeah. And it goes unopposed by almost every single local church here in Texas. We have 30,000 churches in Texas out at the abortion mills or in the Senate or Congress or in the Texas state capitol whenever there's a bill to abolish abortion. It's n nobody hears about it. There was just one. Nobody goes and um, you know deals with the senators. Just wake you know? up call. It's just yeah. So what we're saying is, is that the, keep let's keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing the Bible says is that we love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, Absolutely. and we love our neighbors as ourselves. And we can tell when we're not loving God when the number one cause of death in our state is child sacrifice. And we have 13,000 kids right now in foster care waiting to be adopted. They're like totally adoptable, but nobody wants them because they're not babies. Yep. They're like these kids right here, yep. you know? So with 30,000 churches, 70,000 pastors in Texas, we can't take, we can't adopt these 13,000 orphans, you know? You, uh, are you guys members here? No. No. no, I didn't think so. We're just part of the Bride of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Members of the Bride of Christ. Uh, because we are very active in adoption uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. uh, like Minister Music has five adopted kids, uh -huh. uh, multiracial. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an ongoing group, uh, support group for adoption right. going on. And uh, Jack Graham, who's the, the lead pastor, you know, mm -hmm. because this is a satellite church of yeah, the yeah. mothership. Right. Well, that's the nickname for it. Uh, is very adamant about abortion. Right. And well, from it, the pulpit. he's actually not, I, in my opinion, not that adamant. Because if you go to your abortion website, mm -hmm. it lists the options. One of them is abortion. It talks about how you should know if you're pregnant as soon as possible because the sooner you know, the cheaper it is to have an abortion. Well, we run crisis pregnancy centers. Right. Two of them have two right. mobile units. Right. So we're trying to do as much as as right. we can so but, but if we had on that same we're on the same team no and, i don't uh, i don't yeah. think so like because the pro-life movement and crisis pregnancy centers have nothing to do with making abortion illegal nothing what they do no, is they help we're, women we're, that will actually be worth, helped those are functioning yeah you're right and those, those are, are good things within the law that we currently have and, and what we need is to change the law that we currently have yeah right but yeah. but our, our point is is that if you truly do love god Mm -hmm. Okay, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, we will actually make it illegal. We won't put up with the law. Because, see, when the law says it's okay to kill Jews, we should say, no, it's not. And we are not going to allow it. We should go to our governor and we should say, you be a godly man and uphold our Texas Constitution. Yeah. Who cares what the Supreme Court says? They said that black people were only three-fifths human. That's wrong. All right, so abolitionists, godly men in the community stood up and said no. And so we need to actually, like the pro-life movement has never, ever once, no church, no, nobody has put forth a law in the United States saying that we should make abortion illegal. What the pro-life movement does, where you give your money, $25,000, like what they want, all right, and what they ask for to help save and help end abortion, which doesn't help end abortion, it just helps women who want to be helped. What the pro-life movement does is it regulates abortion. It says when, how, and where you can kill babies. It makes iniquitous yeah. decrees, which the Bible well, says, which it says I, woe I, to you, I man. Know I, right. I know this, but the best, the way we can share love right now under the current operating system of our government, which is according to Romans 13, what we should be doing, is that when the government causes us to do something that is illegal, that's our only bounds to overstep them and go against them. And so what right. we're doing is saying, okay, within the context of honoring the government, which we should do, we we will help you with crisis pregnancy, preach the gospel there, help you with what you need there, and show love to our neighbor at that level. But right. we which, think we're doing a good job, but I really helping women is not a is, is not a bad thing what right. we're saying is is godly men mean to make it illegal and that's the thing that preston wood and other churches and other pastors aren't trying to do they're not pushing it they're not saying hey we need to make this illegal like if there was if raping women was legal yeah. or owning black people was legal we would say no 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 like, like. you know like if the hindus or the, the muslims came over and said no chopping people's heads off we made it illegal because we voted be like no <laughs> we don't care if the government says chopping people's heads off is okay yeah. god says because we don't ever let the government supersede god's law correct and we're correct. godly men who stand at the gates like jeremiah you know why jeremiah and jeremiah 7 why the the jews were so upset at jeremiah because he stood at the gates of the temple and told them 
how evil and wicked it is that we allow child sacrifice in our midst and don't do anything about it. That's what, that was part of hey, yeah. what he was upset about. So, and we do the same thing. We, we agree on a whole council of scripture. I can tell we do. Mm -hmm. We just differ on how to go about. Yeah, but how do you that. go about making it illegal? You as have nothing. I, I know, but you have nothing. Yeah. Like there's nothing you can tell me you do to help make abortion illegal in our land, right? right? I mean, you help women, which is to good. The, the most like, thank God you help women. No, because you can do more. Yeah. You can demand from the governor. You can have, like when um, well, HB, 94, when HB 948 came, you guys could have had 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 people in Austin saying, we need to make abortion illegal. You know how many people showed up? Probably like, in the hundreds. Yeah, yeah. it was unbelievable. And this is, a, to, you know, you, I bet you don't even know what the number one plank in the Republican Texas party is right now. It's to make abortion illegal. But you know what? The religious leaders don't want to have anything to do with it because they know one third of their women in there have had abortions. One third of Christians have abortions. It's something that people want. So the pastors and the godly men say, well, we'll just help the ones that want help. And the ones that want to murder their babies, we're going to ignore it. And that's what we're saying is wrong. Yeah. Well, it's nice, nice to meet you. And, uh, it was good meeting you too. You uh, I'm praying day. for you too. I'm glad you have great weather. Yeah. <laughs> godly time. men who don't oppose evil are evil men. Yeah, People who call themselves godly but don't oppose evil. So just think about it, sir. Ask your conscience. All right, thank you. I appreciate it.